In this video, I'll show you how to make a risk assessment matrix in Excel where you'll have all your activities laid out and depending on the probability and the impact that you choose, the risk level is going to automatically update based on this matrix on the side. I'll show you how to make both a text-based matrix as well as a numerical one like this. Finally, we'll make this awesome visual to compare all the risk levels for each activity. Let's get into it. The first step for us is to create a table to lay out all of the different risks. So you'll notice I have a few different columns with the ID, risk name, short description, who the manager is, the probability, the impact, and the risk level. So let me fast forward how I add a few activities. Awesome, so here's some quick examples. I've got the ID, the name, short description, and manager. For these parts right here, we'll work on them later. So we're done with the table layout and you can actually download it for free in the video description to follow along. From here, we should work on the matrix on the side. So it's gonna have two parts. One is the y-axis with the probability and then over here is the x-axis or the horizontal one with the impact. And for these, I think it might be easier to just insert a text box. So under shapes, we'll go for this first one, which is the text box. I'm gonna add one up here as the impact. And then I'm just going to format this. So let me just center it like that, bolden it, and I'm just going to make it a bit bigger too. Make sure it doesn't have any outlines. So under shape format, I'm going to choose no outline. And I'm also going to go for no fill. So it's this part right here. Now I can just duplicate this with control D. And I'm going to add another one right here and make sure that's rotated like this for the probability this time. Great, so that's the layout and then for all of these parts right here, we can actually add a border of sorts. So I'm just gonna go over here and go for all borders. For this very first one, maybe we'll just remove it. So I'm gonna go for no borders again and make sure this one is actually full of borders and same thing on this one. So the shortcut there that I'm using is Alt H B A. That's basically adding all borders. So we're gonna have the different levels on this side and then on this other side as well. So it could be the very likely as the number one, then it's likely as the number two, followed by possible, unlikely, etc. And same thing on this side. So let me fast forward how I do that. Awesome, so that's what it looks like. And for the wording here, it is a bit subjective. So maybe instead of critical, you could call it catastrophic. That's really up to you. Overall, you can also do this with numbers like going from one to five. All you need to do is just change these from one to three all the way to five. The main problem though I find with numbers is that it's not all that clear whether a one is good or bad. So with words, I think that makes it a lot more clear. That said, later we'll go over a full matrix just using numbers, but for the time being, let's fill this one in. So if it's negligible and rare, we can choose low over here as the option. And on the flip side, if it's critical and very likely, we can call this extreme. Let me fast forward how I add these. And in my case, I'm gonna go all the way from low, medium, high to extreme. Awesome, so we have the text laid out and keep in mind this is a bit subjective. Maybe right here, the major and likely would be high for you instead of extreme. That said, let's go ahead and color these so it is a bit easier to see. For now, we just need to do this manually as in the matrix, it's never really gonna change. So right here as the colors, I'm gonna go for a red being the extreme. And on the low side, if you wanna select multiple, just press the control key. So you can see I've selected these two right here and this last one too and I'm gonna change this one to green. Let me fast forward the rest. Awesome, so we have the table layout and we have the matrix done. That means we can actually work on filling in the full table. So in here as the probability, we now know all of the different options that we have. So we can actually create a dropdown for this by going over to data and clicking on data validation, which is this button down over here. Within it, we want a list and more specifically, the source is going to be from very likely all the way to rare. Make sure you select it from here instead of typing it manually. So here's our dropdown. And because we've selected it from this side, if I were to change this to a number five instead, you'll notice that the options are now updated. That's why I think it's best if we link it. We'll do the same thing with the impact side. So we'll go to data validation and we're gonna go for a list and the source is gonna be this top part instead. So from negligible all the way to critical, press on okay, and now we have this as a drop down too. Let's drag these all the way down to the bottom, like this. Because we've done this data validation step, it means that our cells are well protected. 
So instead of very likely, if someone says 100% in here, you'll notice that it doesn't actually let you put that as it's simply not part of the dropdown, so it's nicely protected there. Finally, for the risk level, it would basically be the multiplication of the probability times the impact. The problem is, because we have these as text, obviously we can't just multiply text. That's where our matrix comes handy over here. So for instance, if it's very likely and if it's a minor impact, we know that it would be high. Now to have this be automatic, we can actually use the index match formula and pay attention here as this is a bit of a tricky formula for people to grasp. So it's going to be equals to the index function, that's the first part, as the array is basically where is our result pool, so it's going to be all of the area inside of this matrix. Press the comma key, the row number, we're going to add our first match in here. So we're saying the first thing is the probability. Whenever the lookup value is very likely, we want to find the corresponding result in this side, so the lookup array is going to be in here. The lookup value, very likely, comma, lookup array, all of this range right here, comma, and we want an exact match. We'll close up parenthesis, press the comma key again, and now we want to do the same thing for the second criteria, which is the impact for us. So we'll put a match in here again. The lookup value is actually right behind this formula. We're looking for this value right here, which is the minor for us, so G3, comma, the lookup array is within this whole area right here, comma, and we want an exact match. We close the parenthesis for the match there, and now we need to close it again for the index formula that we laid out at the start. Close the parenthesis and hit enter. So this first one is high, but you'll notice as we start to drag this down, it gives us an error. So let's double click in here, and you'll notice what's happened is that everything's moved down one because we moved it down from this top formula to this next one a bit lower down. So we somehow need to fix this, so keep it at this range so it doesn't move on this side, but it does move down on this other side as each activity is going to have a different probability and impact. And for this, what we need to do is first select this part right here and press the F4 key. That's going to make sure it doesn't move down. Same thing with these other columns, so the very likely side and this whole negligible part. So I'm going to select the other range, so this lookup array, press the F4 key again, and for this final part as well, press the F4 key and hit enter. Now I can double click on the side here to drag this down and you'll notice all of them should say hi as we have the same responses. But if I change this to rare and I go from minor to critical, you'll notice that it says medium now. If we look in here, we said rare and we said critical, so it's saying medium. And feel free to test all of these other ones, but it should all move automatically. Alright, so we've now made the table layout, the matrix, and we've also filled in the different values. That said, for the risk level here, it would be nice if it matched the same color as this matrix. Before we do that though, if you struggled with some of the formulas here, like the index match and locking with the F4 key, maybe you just followed along without actually understanding it, then I'd recommend you check out our Excel for business and finance course. With our comprehensive curriculum, we cover all things ranging from writing Excel formulas to building awesome visual dashboards, creating large dynamic financial models, and much more. This is basically the course I wish I had before I started working in an Excel-heavy corporate role. If all of that sounds interesting, head over to the link in the description below. And if you want more than just Excel, we also have several other courses, including Power BI, finance and valuation, and much more. As we said, we now want to work on all the different colorings here, and for this we're gonna use conditional formatting to make it dynamic. So within this area right here, make sure you have this whole column selected, and we're gonna go over to highlight cell rules when they're equals to a specific text value. So we're saying that when the risk level is equals to high, it should be matching that high color, which is this orange one. So down here, I'm going to go under custom format and in the fill color, I'm going to choose that orange color. If you want a specific one, you can go under more colors and in custom here, I can type the hex code, which in my case is ff 8 press on OK there and OK again. You'll notice the high is now in orange. Press OK another time here. And if we now go under conditional formatting, you'll notice when we go to manage rules towards the bottom, we can just duplicate this same rule. So I'm going to go over to duplicate. 
Instead of high though, we want this one for the extreme. So I'm gonna go over to the edit rule part right here. And it's that same range, but we now wanna change the wording here to just the extreme. And we also want to change the format in here to a red color. Let me press on OK, OK again, and just apply that. If we press on OK another time, you'll notice we now have an extreme, and we basically want to follow those same steps for the other two. So manage rules again, and let me fast forward how I do this. Awesome, we now have a full risk assessment table where we can change the probability, we can change the impact, and that risk level is going to update both the wording and the colors. At this point, you might be thinking it would be nice to get all of these different risks together in one chart so we can easily compare them. For this, the first thing we would need to do is change the values to numerical ones as I've done right here. You can see basically I'm multiplying the 1 by the 5 to get a total of 5 within the matrix. For this one, I'm multiplying the 2 by the 5, etc. So that should be fairly straightforward and I manually change the colors. For this other part right here, we don't actually need to use the index match formula. Of course, you can if you want to, but it's the same thing as just going for the probability multiplied by the impact. You're going to get the same value there. Once you have everything laid out numerically like this, we can actually make the visual. So I'm going to select these two parts, the probability and the impact like that. And I'm going to go over to insert and choose a specific chart within this part, which is the scatter. Let's click on that, and this is the foundation of what we'll need to build this. Let me zoom into this a bit more, and in this area, we can go to this plus sign to add a few different axes. So I'm going to go for the axis titles on the side, and let me change these. Nice, I've changed all of the names here, and now for these labels, I would like them to just go up to a 5, not all the way to a 6. So right click, format axis is what we'll do. The maximum should be a 5. And the measure here is basically the difference between them, so we want it to just have increments of 1. Same thing on this side, I'm gonna click on this bottom part right here and make the same changes. So right click, format axis, we want a maximum of 5 and we want increments of 1. Awesome, it looks something like this right now, let's actually delete these grid lines simply by clicking and pressing on delete. That said, right now it's kind of hard to tell what's good and what's bad, so it would be nice to create some kind of a fill color that goes a bit like the matrix where we have the red up top all the way to the green towards the bottom. We can actually do that with a gradient fill. So we want to click on this inside the plot area and as the fill part, so this area right here, this bucket, we're going to go for a gradient fill. You can see this is what it looks like where I would go for a red color as the most extreme all the way down to a green color as the less risky. For these colors what I did is basically went through all of the different gradient stops, you can click on any particular one and change the fill color for it. When you do you'll notice that one area changes and you want to follow those same steps for each of the different areas. Also you can move these around so make it more yellow or less yellow depending on how you move them. Also, for the angles, I think by default it goes at 90, which looks something like this, but you want to change that to 130 so it's more diagonal, maybe 135 would work too. Finally, for these labels right here, right now we don't know what this refers to. Are we talking about the payment downtime or are we talking about the warehouse fire? If you want to find out, just want to right click and go to add data labels. Right now we just see some numbers, but we want to click on this area again and go to format data labels. Now we want to choose this risk name column. So for the value from cells, we're going to tick on that and select this whole risk name area up top. Press on OK there. And you'll notice the payment downtime has a 5 in terms of impact and probability, which if we look in here, that's looking correct. The problem is we can't see these very well. Let's actually remove part of it. So right click and go to format data labels again. We're gonna go for no Y value, so we don't need to see those numbers. And we're actually gonna add a fill in it. So let's go for a solid fill like that in black. That said, for the text, we need to change it to a white color. So we can go over to format up top and change this to a white. Nice, now this is very easy to see what's going on in each of these parts. I can also change these dots to a black line. This should be this fill area and I'm going to change that to a black like so. 
that's looking a lot better. That said, some of these do have some overlap. For instance, here under bankruptcy, I think there's a second one. So you can see there's data breach down below. So you can just drag and move it a bit higher up so we can see both options. Awesome. So we've managed to lay out all of the different risks visually. If we take a look at this again, it looks like there is quite a high probability for a lot of these risks. So that's something to keep in mind. Also, another key limitation of a risk matrix is that it's kind of subjective. When it comes to things like, let's say, the payment downtime, some people might think the probability should definitely be a 5, while others might think a 1 is more appropriate there. So it's really hard to stay objective here. The same thing goes with the actual matrix on the side. For some of you, a score of 5 might actually be more like a low than a medium. So that really depends on your criteria too. Next up, if you want to make a Gantt chart in Excel for project management, you should watch this video over here. Or if you want to make an inventory management template, you should watch this other video over here. Hit that like and that subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.